okay so here in the user controller or auth controller we are going to write user sign in and uh, refresh token apis sign in is simple uh, we are going to use api v1 auth routes auth controller auth service and here we are going to use a gwt strategies and then later we will create a auth guards and all so we will just uh, refactor this uh, controller and make it look like uh, i mean make it look like compatible with auth controller i just copied the user controller as it is just to avoid the typing the same thing again and again here inside uh, dto we are going to create a user sign in dto that will ask you for entering the email and password so it is user sign in dto and the dto we are going to create inside auth let's say auth request dto.ts then we will create another is auth response dto.ts export class user sign in dto and we will copy couple of things from the existing code and then we will change the properties here we need two properties in sign in one is email and another is uh, password so email is already there we will just change it to password it is required and then we will pass this uh, dto in the sign in controller so password should be def defined both are required and user sign in dto that we are going to pass in this and we'll, let's import it and then we are going to create a auth service and in auth service we are going to create a particular method let's say simple sign in so let's create a auth service and inside auth service we will define these uh, method validate by user I, validate user by password okay and then this method we have to create inside a user service so this is also going to be injectable class export class uh, user service sorry auth service and then inside that we are going to define this particular method there will be a constructor there we are going to do a dependency injection and then uh, it will be injectable class and inside constructor we can inject the logger we can inject a uh, user service we can inject config service all sort of service which we need because we need config service to get uh, some of the config parameters to create a token and all so first of all we will inject the 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 user service and user service is dependent on uh, auth service also auth service is dependent on user service there is a cyclic dependency so how we will import it we will import it using inject forward reference user service that means auth service is using user service and user service can also use auth service and here we are going to import other uh, services like private read only config service and we'll pass the config service instance <coughs> okay that's it now we will just define this method uh, validate user by password so here we are passing the payload which contains the email and the password and then we will start uh, validating things inside this uh, method here we will check first the email exists in the user database if yes then we will check the password is matching with the database password or not with the bcrypt compare password method so here first we will just check if the user exists with this email id so we can just use uh, this user service method user service dot find by email this is how we are going to use user service inside auth service and there is a dependency injection already done for that so const user equal to this dot uh, user service await this dot user service dot find one by email and you pass the email property if the user exists then we are good if not then you can throw a user not found exception or you are not authenticated but simply you just can, you can throw is uh, not found exception that means the email you provided doesn't exist in the system you may customize this response and send some customized response by extending the not found exception you can create your own exception like export class user not found exception extends the not found exception and then you send a inside a super inside a constructor super you can send your own custom message let's say is match false initially and if the match is true then we can generate a token through the sign-in process 
here let's match the password now whatever the password we have in the payload and whatever the password in the database so we will use uh, compare password utility so is match equal to this dot compare password compare password is a sync method so we have to await this also and we are going to pass two properties the entered password and the database password so the first argument is the entered password and another argument is the database password and here we need to await this await this dot user service this is user dot password and then we need to we define this method um, async compare password and this is the private method because only uh, internal method is calling it private async compare password and you pass two arguments entered password and the database password and then you just do is return this dot return bcrypt dot compare uh, entered password comma the database password if it is returning true that means both the password strings are same if false that means whatever the password you have entered that is not same as the hash value of the password stored inside a database we will just import bcrypt from the bcrypt module and then we will just use bcrypt dot compare i guess that is the method bcrypt dot uh, await bcrypt dot uh, compare password i mean simple compare entered password and database password that's it if match is found if is match true otherwise uh, if there is a failure then it will throw an error directly here let's say if is match not found if is match is true then we can just get the token token equal to this dot uh, now generate token or create token we just pass the user and that's it just the payload payload means this is the i mean we need to pass the user object uh, which is representing this email so we'll just pass this user and we are going to call this method private async create token it will take a user object of type user entity and then we'll just uh, create a token by passing some arguments we are going to use a jwt service let's say here it is of type user entity and then here we are going to do couple of things so here first of all let's say the expiry what is the expiry of this token so we haven't set any parameter in the configuration first first let's create a config for the authentication there we can put two properties expiry and auth secret i mean token secret because to create a token you need to encrypt you need to also pass the token secret and the token expiry for now let's create expire in that is of type number so you will pass the number of seconds and then we'll convert that into millisecond by multiplying that by thousand so this is auth config and then we will just do the same thing we'll populate the default interface and uh, we will put that inside a config service here it is auth and it which has a property expiring that is of type number 3000 let's say this is the default value and inside config service now it is invalid because we need to pass the auth object auth object has expiring property that we can get from the environment env dot let's say token expiry and we need to convert it into a number uh, that is that is that is in seconds that these many seconds you are giving for the token expiry and then we can use this property in our auth service this is like auth dot expiring and then we will just uh, create the expire value because expiry let's say the two hours so two hours from the current time current time plus uh, the seconds of the two hours that will be the expiry of the token so if uh, expiration initially uh, should be of type date or undefined and then if expire in property is set from the config you will create a expiration expiration will be uh, new date from the current date of new date I and mean current time of the the current date plus the expire expiring value that will be the expiration we are putting for the token and then expiration dot set date expiration dot uh, get time 
I think get time and then you can add the number of seconds based on the expiry and multiply by 1000 milliseconds. <clears throat> so it should be uh, in seconds the expiry in property we are setting in the environment variable and then we will just create a payload which we wanted to set inside a token JWT token we are generating and we are going to use nest JS JWT for that that we also need to add inside a auth module here JWT payload will be anything like user ID you can put uh, email you can put permissions permissions is required for authorization later and then we will put uh, the expiry in property like what is the expiry of this particular token after it is returned from the login API successful login API okay and then we can just call this dot uh, JWT dot sign but uh, we haven't introduced the uh, JWT nest JS JWT yet. So what we need to do is we need to use this JWT service, which is provided by nest JS JWT, and we need to return the data and the token, whatever the token we are generating from this. So here we will just add private read only JWT service from the JWT service. JWT service we need to add through nest JS uh, JWT. I think yes, nest is JWT and we will add it in the auth service. And once we add that, we can just get the JWT service from the JWT nest is JWT. And then, if we are using a service, obviously we need to add the JWT nest is JWT module inside auth module. Let's say this is the auth module we are creating. Here we are using two things: passport uh, module passport module for author, uh, authenticating authorizing the request that we are going to use later but we need a nest yes, CWT module right now passport module also we need so we can import that using same npm install minus minus save passport module and then uh, first of all I think passport module is available or not let's check this is coming from nest JS passport and here we are going to use passport module so passport module dot four uh, register dot register and here we are passing the default properties like default strategy is uh, jwt and session is false and then we are going to initialize the nest js jwt module and here important part is how we are initializing it there are multiple methods available jwt dot module dot register register async we are using register async because we want to dynamically initialize this JWT module otherwise we can also use simple dot register and we just pass it so here we are going to use another module to inject the dynamic configuration so we are using register async method here we are going to pass the token secret and the expiry of the token all these properties we are going to pass dynamically through external module so we are going to use the same process whatever we have used for database module db module dot root async and then we were passing injecting the config service and getting the values the jwt module options from the configurations jwt module options are like what is the secret you are passing what is the expiration of the token all those properties like secret we are going to get from the config service config service dot get dot oath currently i think we have only one property there we can add another property is like a secret value which is of type string and we will get this secret from same as we are getting the expiry so here we in the auth service we will just set secret equal to pro env dot maybe token secret or some environment variable which we are going to put in the dot env to pass the secret to create the token through this nest js jwt module so token secret we are passing now expire in so in the auth dot secret and then if you have an expired expiry already set so that we can check using config service dot get dot auth dot expire in if expiry already set you can also set the same expiry value to this token here option dot sign sign in option and you can set expire in let's say you put a 15 minute 
so you can just put the same 15 minute here config service dot auth expire in and uh, expire in will be taken as uh, i think in seconds and here inside uh, in this module i can check what is the values which it is expecting so there are all these options expire in that is in seconds so this is our gwt module here uh, imports use factory and then i have to inject the config service so that config service can be used by this gwt module to initialize it and then this is auth module auth module is using user service so we have to use you have to add user module inside a auth module so that you can use user service inside a auth service so you will use a forward reference because there is a cyclic dependency forward reference uh, user module and then any other module like config module app logger module you wanted to add inside auth module you can just add them currently i think uh, we don't have a user module created so i will just copy this syntax and just remove whatever just keep only the things which we need for the user module i mean i thought like user module is already created it's a totally empty class and here we will add a user controller user service inside provider and exports what is the use of exports if you are putting a, some service inside export that means this service can be used by other modules when you are putting that module inside a dependency of other module okay we will just uh, delete all the unused imports and then import the controller so this is my user module and this user module i will add inside a domain module and add a dependency inside a auth module okay so we are kind of pretty much close to achieving something here i will put the, the user module and then uh, app logger module i can also add a config module so here i will pass the auth controller auth service so providers uh, we already have i will add the auth service and then inside exports i will add auth service so i have now auth module and uh, the user module ready and we can just add the user module and auth module in the domain module and then we can think of uh, start testing these apis even if they are working we'll just do npm run build and see this jwt service dot i think dot sign and we are just passing the data so it will just generate access token and give it to us so this is a basic sign in and the sign up apis we have created now we'll start uh, testing it okay now let's see our app is running we will just uh, update the user module uh, we will introduce a config module logger module and uh, so what is the user module is doing so db module dot for root because we are using the user entity inside the inside the user service we are accessing the user repository and then uh, let's see we will just compile it and then we will also do the forward reference forward reference of auth module because the user module is dependent on auth module auth module is dependent on the user modules there is a cyclic dependency so we have to use the forward reference to avoid it okay i think i added uh, at the rate uh, extra i mean that is not required here and that will fix our problem so this forward reference we are doing with the auth module and we also added a logger module and the config module so that completes our user module now user module auth module we can add in the domain module user module auth module and then now we can start doing npm run build and we will fix the the import locations because somewhere we are importing it from src config src logger so npm run start i think it will give us a lot of errors i guess because we are not importing a lot of things nest start and you can see a lot of errors are there this is validated by okay let's find them one by one okay this method in the user sign up we are not using so we will delete this method we will add a couple of more methods uh, in the user controller but for now let's remove it and then what are the other errors 
in the auth controller and auth service we see a couple of more errors so here we will create a auth response dot dto dot ts and based on the auth response what we are returning we are returning two properties i mean user id email expire in permissions and the access token these are the two properties we are returning from the sign in so we will create a response dto for it and with that response dto we can add inside a auth controller saying uh, so that the same the same can appear in the, the swagger documentation that okay after doing login you will get the response with the user id email permissions expiration of the token and the access token so all these properties uh, we can define api okay response description and the type user logged in successfully and the type you will just we have recently created a user response auth response dto that same response dto we can put inside a type that is user sign in response dto i mean later we will just modify it we'll put all the required properties inside it the properties can be user id email and all those things so let's see what we are returning from this api api internal server response that will be again as some description you can put the same can be updated in the swagger in the swagger it will tell okay this api returns all these response codes 400 500 200 so that will be just updated in the swagger doc and front end people whoever is the consumer will know okay this is the expected response code from this api is all these and then uh, be a bad response is okay let's say if you are not passing the email and the password based on the selected criteria it will return a 4 400 that is a bad request because the client is not uh, sending the required payload to the this particular api okay now the type we can update here valid date username password and once the user id is match we, we are just revisiting the code if match is found we are just returning the token we can just customize the the exceptions we are creating okay so this data we are returning and this uh, properties so we can modify the response dto including all those things user id email uh, permissions expirations and access token so we are using api response property like api property we are using for request dto for response dto we are using api response property that works in the same way but these api response properties for the response properties like this api particular http api will return this kind of payload and same payload will be exposed in the swagger because it is reading all these annotations api okay response api created response api internal server error response api bad request bad re request response and the same will be available in the swagger so we are just writing a response dto we'll update the the some simple examples how the response payload look like and then we will rebuild it and we will see what are the other errors which we need to fix to get the apis up and running and then we will do a small demo okay how our apis are working we will just do a simple login by entering the email password first we will create a user in the system and then we will do the login with that same user credential and we will see if user has been created and we got the access token after doing login so now if i do npm run build again start again we can run this in the watch mode npm run start dev and we can we will keep fixing the the import locations everywhere wherever the errors are so this is from the config service this is from the config module okay this is reporting error inside uh, some dto validate type before that i will fix the import locations for the logger module and the config module and then it's inside a user request dto this validate type is not available in the class validator i think that is the problem so validate type 
should be coming from the class transformer let me check the documentation so we will import this from the the class transformer and that will be import type as a validate type from the class transformer so we will remove the validate type from the class validator import type as i think that is the same in the documentation import type as validate type so that is for the nested payload validation we use validate type and the validate nested from the class transformer and then we will use validate type here the same validate type we will populate inside our uh, DTO so we'll just copy this and we'll just use it here and now it's working we got uh, all the errors fixed passport module is not there so that's a valid error We'll open another uh, terminal. We'll try to get the passport module. And once the passport module is installed, we will just because we are running in the watch mode, this application will run again. Okay, we imported this, added this package, I think, at the different place. We have to add it in the auth service that is inside the packages, not inside the, the root module. Okay, let's uh, Okay, we have added this and now we are getting something else. User repository is provided. Is it a part of current module? And then, uh, okay, user repository is actually we are accessing user repository inside a user service. So we need to use, we can just try dbmodule.for root. I never saw this because we are already using dbmodule.for root in the domain module. That means all the entities we are already passing as entities array then it should not report this error db module dot four root is taking uh, object as an input which is having entities and uh, passing all the entities currently we have only user entity in the system so it's an array and we can just pass the user entity that's it we are still getting this uh user repository is a provider it's not part of user module so what we will try to do is this is auth module i think we need to add a type or a module dot four feature inside a user module and we just need to pass the entity okay this is the entity this particular module is going to access so that user repository will be available for that uh, services to consume because we are injecting user repository inside the injectable service so we'll go to user module and type our module dot four feature okay and tada i think now this is working this is really most important but i need to still think is this the right way because without even doing this should work because at the root module we are using type uh, db module dot four root and we are passing all the entities for now our services are working and we can see how all these things are running we have only two apis one is sign in and one is sign up and here i'm trying so this you can see this documentation nicely written documentation is coming because we are using these swagger annotations api property api response property api okay response api created response all those things here we are just testing a simple user sign up it should create a user in the database currently we need to mark this password as a select false so that whenever it does the query to the database password should not populate as a property in the response and then we can do the login we will just try with the hello one demo one and then hello demo hello demo that is the password so when i do this we are getting internal server error i guess uh, we are missing something okay we are missing one environment variable that we will go inside env and we will see what is the environment uh, variable value inside our config service i think we are missing two properties expire in and uh, token secret that we can get from uh, config service so if from config service we will get the exact values what we need to put in the dot env it's like jwt token secret and uh, token expiry so we'll put that and we'll just, we just put a random string this string will be used to create your token from the by the nest yes, GWT module and the token expiry these are the number of seconds and you restart the application and try to do the login again 
we still need to improve 10 tons of things here and now you can see we are getting the data and the access token this data we need to destructure because the api documentation tells us a different story now we will improve a lot of other things and we will see that in the next video